So you've just played 10 ranked games. You lost the first three and thought to yourself that the next is surely a win. Then you finally win one and think your luck is turning around, only to end up playing all day and being down 100 RR. Let's call this person Slime, like a level one monster in a video game. My goal now is to help Slime level up with this video. First, I wanna outline that there are three different ranked categories in Valorant. There is Iron to Gold, Plat to Ascendant, and Immortal Plus. This is also commonly referred to as the Low, Medium, and High Elo. And within each of these categories, I think that there's one main theme that you need to focus on to improve. Now, before we get into each theme, I want you guys to understand that it's actually useful for you guys to watch all three categories, even if you're not in that rank, in order to gain understanding. And I'm not just saying that, just for my views. A different belief that we need to change is that reps is not everything. Sure, they are important and you need reps to improve, but focus is far more important than how much you actually play. In other words, it is a lot easier and more efficient to improve at one skill than it is to improve at 10 different skills. And of course, you will still be improving at other skills passively, but you want to have something to improve at actively. Basically, active training versus passive training. So with that said, let's get into what is the most important thing to focus on while you're in iron to gold. And that is your mechanics. I truly believe that if you had sufficient mechanics and you focus on training your mechanics while slowly improving at other skills, you will be able to reach gold. What I mean by that is if you set aside dedicated time to train your mechanics while you're climbing up to gold, you will hit gold. That means that I don't think it's super valuable to you know figure out lineups or looking at how Valorant actually plays because your game is going to be a lot different than other ranks. You know, if you can't get the kill when it matters most because you haven't really been training mechanics and you've been focusing on the util side of things then you're using your utility as a crutch and it's far better to crutch on your mechanics than it is your utility early in the game because at the end of the day it is a shooter and you have to actually get the kill so some basic mechanics that you should be training for valorant while you're in iron to gold is crosshair placement peaking gun hygiene gun skill and angle comfort this is all stuff that you've already heard before, but the point of this video is to focus your attention on something and to improve at it. And I think in Iron the Gold, that is mechanics. I always like to use basketball as an analogy. So I don't know how to play basketball at all, but if I were learning to play basketball, I would start with learning how to dribble the ball and then maybe shooting the ball or you know, maybe just passing, you know, just the basics. If I start figuring out, you know, strategy or doing all this extra stuff before I actually get those fundamentals down, then I'm not going to be able to get anywhere in basketball. And I think Valorant mechanics is very much the same way. You shouldn't really be thinking about the util, you know, all that stuff until you're actually able to dribble and shoot. Once you kind of have that part of your training down, then that'll kind of free your mental space or your mental stack to actually do the other things, you know, like using your utility properly or coming to your teammates or trading, you know, just all that stuff will become easier once you're not really thinking about how to shoot properly. I also think that for beginners in this stage, it is actually pretty useful for them to learn proper aim technique in the aim trainer. Because you're early on in your mouse and keyboard journey, it is useful to learn what proper technique is so you can develop it with good habits from the get-go. If you're curious about this, refer to this aim training video here. In order to make your mechanics training easier, especially when you play, I highly recommend that you pick a simple agent until you hit above gold. So some general recommendations would be Reyna, Gecko, Jet. You could even go as far to say Brimstone and Killjoy are decent choices as well, but those two tend to be a little bit more passive. So just know that if you are gonna pick those two agents, Killjoy and Brimstone, that you're not gonna play overly passive. So hopefully now we have a little bit more efficient training. We're focusing on our mechanics, but not mindlessly playing 10 ranked games. And hopefully, with this, Slime will be able to go from level 1 to level 10. Next up, we have Flat to Ascendant. Now that we've established our Valorant shooting fundamentals, we can move on to Agent Mastery or Agent Identity. What I mean by this is that this is where you start to expand on, you know, picking your agent, finding what role you like, actually how to play your agent and role properly. So we cover the shooting side of things. Now we kind of cover the utility side of things and what your role is in the game. As a general idea, you know, duelists entry and make space. Initiators support teammates and duelists to take fights. Controllers throw smokes and they lurk and, you know, they anchor, whatever. Sentinels hold space and lurk, you know, they kind of share similar roles. But by knowing that, you can now expand on what your job is and try to limit test. The example I like to bring up here is Sova on Ascent. So now that you kind of know how to shoot, if you learn how to play Sova on Ascent, this, you know, this would involve learning dart lineups or wall bangs and rotate timings and where should I play? Like starting positions, you know, how do I stop a rush? Like all this stuff that is just the specifics related to your agent. Notice how this is very agent specific. You know, if I'm playing Omen, for example, I'm not going to figure out the Sova dart lineup for B, right? That doesn't make sense. So I'm not going to figure out wall bang lineups. That's why it's agent specific, it's role specific. And you need to now figure out how to leverage your agent to be more impactful compared to your teammates and your enemies because you're trying to climb. I think this is kind of where you're allowed to go down the util rabbit hole, you know, create a playbook for yourself, figure out how you actually want to play that map and then eventually all maps and go from there. The main thing here is I don't think you should be afraid to experiment. This is kind of where you start to make your player identity and build off from it. 
For most players, this is kind of like the big point in their Valorant career or their Valorant journey, in my opinion. And you know, this isn't to say that you shouldn't be training your mechanics. You should still be training your mechanics. It's just not as much of a focus. Now the main focus is playbooks. And hopefully at this point, once you kind of climb up to Ascendant, you have intermediate level shooting and maybe even intermediate level of agent mastery slash role mastery. So next up, we have Immortal Plus. So the climb from Immortal to Radiant is probably the hardest out of all the other ranks so far, at least in my opinion. I think you have a large range of players here, but the main theme for Immortal Plus is understanding macro. Now this is overly simplistic and in order to actually hit Radiant, you need to be well-rounded as a player with your mechanics, with your agent mastery and with macro play. But being able to think about the game at a big picture level is super important because that's where you get those random round wins or like you know eco wins like the things that really shift the tides in the economy and just team play in general this is where snowballing really matters you know gathering ult orbs and winning rounds and then getting more ult orbs and then you know like i said before with the money valorant's a very momentum based game at this point and understanding that and trying to maximize each round in immortal plus i think is so important and by understanding macro a little bit more you are able to adapt quickly and kind of come up with counter plans and stuff like that and this is where the game is less about yourself and more about the team play and what plan you're actually trying to accomplish you should realistically have a much harder time carrying in this rank that's also why you'll see people tend to duo queue i think it's undoubtedly easier at this point to climb when you are duo queue just because you have more teamwork and more plans and stuff like that some example of macro plays that could be useful, for example, is defaults, which I outlined earlier, throwing fakes, reading and exploiting certain tendencies. So like if someone rotates really early, you can make a call on that. You start outlining your post plants before you even get onto site with killjoy ults and sub ults, just those type of little things that add up because you know those are really big round changers. And to note here, by working on your big picture understanding of the game, your timings of everything should be better. For example, when you throw util, when you actually push out, what peaks you take, when you take those peaks. At this point, the time to kill is very low. People kill you really quickly, right? There's util on top of that makes it even harder to get kills and you die even quicker. So by timing things correctly and timing things well, this is kind of where you get those edges. Let me put it this way. If you go from a radiant lobby and you're rushing every round, compared to say an ascendant lobby, the rushes are gonna play out very differently. And even in both of these executes, if the utility is exactly the same, the timing is gonna be slightly different. And you know, agent routing is gonna be different. The way we take peaks are gonna be a little bit different because we understand that the timing is super crucial. The easiest example I can think of is just timing a dart with a flash. This means that the dart is more likely to get a scan, you get more info on the site, and then you're able to kind of attack the site a little bit easier. And for those of you still struggling to climb out of Immortal and to get into Radiant, just remember that you have to be well-rounded. If you feel like you're lacking in any of the other categories that we mentioned before, your mechanics or your playbooks or your util usage, all of that stuff, then it is important that you revisit those before you kind of tackle the macro again. But hopefully at this point, you know, slime level up from level 25 to level 50, maybe even a 100. To me, 100 is pro level. And honestly, from level 50 to 100, in other words, radiant to pro level is so massive and i just i don't know how to get there so this is kind of what the video is going to cover how to go from iron to radiant of course you could do all this yourself and go from level one to level 50 but if you guys are interested in any help you know you can reach out for coaching or join my discord for more details regardless it is impossible for you to climb in valorant if you don't have good peaking so if you're still having trouble with that or just want a refresher check out this video on peaking here